Atlanta is definitely one of my favorite shows up there with the rest of development. Some of the reason behind its ranking is of course Donald Glover and Hero Mariah's direction, and also because of the way I relate and sympathize with the characters in the show. I also like the way that the show is shot. I'm stealing the super grainy low thirds horizon look from this show. Donald on how the show was structured. I'm not making a TV show, I'm making an experience. And uh, it shows. <laughs> Despite my high praise for the show, there's a lack of exposition for some of the major characters and there's no major catharsis or explanation for characters in all episodes. But that's the point. Donald did state the show was about showing white people they don't know everything about black culture and the show should be considered more of an experience. The show relishes in the day-to-day -day lives of these characters and doesn't often explain everything and this is why I love Woods in season two. Now I would love more commentary on subject matter and thematic elements in the show, but being aware of the show's structure allows me to love woods for what it is, an exploration of trauma and the conflict of fame and authenticity. It's an episode that was trying to be honest. The episode allows us to better understand the person behind Paperboy. Now, without setup and some development from prior episodes, technically this wouldn't be my favorite. The show has some seriously great episodes across the board, but what this episode focuses on is what could be considered the core of the show, Paperboy or Alfred. Without Paperboy rapping about his life, which according to him is chickens coming home to roost, Atlanta could be similar, but with rap being the most popular genre in America right now, the exploration of trauma and celebrity seems timely. Season two of Atlanta builds on the first season with a little bit more development for Darius, Van, and Alfred. Earn is what the show sort of focuses on, or more specifically, Earn has to make some money, he sees opportunity in his cousin Paperboy who's friends with Darius, I think, who live in the same house, I think, I think they're friends or something, I haven't seen it confirmed in the show. The show at time focuses on Earn's journey to make a stable living. Alfred gets moments in the show when we get a glimpse into his life. Funny enough, the plot in Woods is just, Paperboy meets up with an old friend or partner, and after a conflict on whether they should pretend to be in a relationship for the clout, Alfred decides to walk home and then gets jumped before sprinting into the woods to avoid getting shot. He then gets lost for a while and finally makes it out of the woods. The plot is simple, but executed in a way that leaves a huge impression. The way the episode starts is Alfred is laying on his couch and his late mom appears in the kitchen. Alfred's mom had passed prior to the first episode. Details around her death and how it affected him aren't elaborated on, but the fact that she appears might speak to his closeness or attachment to his mom. Additionally, the lights in the back of the house dim as she leaves. Sim symbolism? 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 Alfred at most reacts to his mom in the moment by groaning and looking back to judge if she was still there. She of course wasn't, and in the moment it feels like him coping with her gone, much like in The Haunting of Hill House, an excellent show on Netflix, not an advertisement. Instead of fighting with the fact that she isn't there anymore, maybe he inserts her into his life. A childlike moment with Alfred's mother reminding him to stop being lazy and get up. In the moment we learn a little bit more about him and why in the first episode his remark towards Earn feels a little bit loaded. Nigga, I'm trying to help you. Man, man. nigga, I ain't seen a hurt from you since my mom's funeral. Not exactly sure what means to cope Alfred uses when thinking about his mother, as it isn't established in the show. For the actor who plays Alfred, Brian Tyree Henry, he said he used the whole episode as a means to cope with the passing of his mom after the first season. I know it was the most cathartic thing that ever happened. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize, but it saved my life. This show has saved my life. Uh, and uh, it helped me a lot to get through what that grief is and get closer to those relationships that you have because you don't know how long you have it. Ah, uh, GQ, how dare you? <laughs> Trauma response is real, even in drug dealing rappers. And it's hard not to want to comfort Alfred at the moment. Also in the episode, we see a stare off in the clothing store partially informed by paranoia but there are also many instances of the show of Paperboy's paranoia, another form of trauma response. Later in the episode, instead of exploring trauma response, we see Alfred get traumatized. Alfred encounters a man in the woods who antagonizes him. I initially thought the man wasn't real. The show doesn't explain why the man was in the woods or how he saw the boys who jumped Alfred, but none of the things he says is specific to Alfred in a personal way. Side note, Alfred sees a dead deer, shout out to Get Out. I don't know if they're related, but it feels very similar and I wanted to put that out there. I wasn't exactly sure, but the show has other surreal moments like this with characters. Regardless of real or not, Alfred is scared and feels fear. Flight or fight kicking in. He just got mugged and almost shot because he was famous, got lost in the woods to survive, and then is antagonized and almost killed again by a random man. The events have to have left an impression on him. Donald Glover has said that all black people have PTSD and that the show is an experience. It validates others' experiences by saying your experience is real. 
showing the pain of that moment and shows others what people go through and can go through. Not in the episode, but later in the season, you learn that Alfred may have enabled some bullies to bother another kid so they would leave Ern alone, but then the kid commits suicide. Alfred and Ern seem to be in middle school and the show hasn't even explored potential grief fallout from that. Rappers are hurting, despite the flashiness of fame. Non-famous people are hurting. Sharing our pain and trauma can be the first step in recovery and engaging in healthy coping when life seems so bleak at times. Like I mentioned in another video, history informs our future, and understanding that allows us to get closer to finding a way to do better collectively. Fame is this nebulous thing that popular society collectively admires and completely bashes in other moments. It's no secret that the attention that fame brings can be destructive, especially due to people craving proximity. Though Alfred rejects constructed reality, he uses his rap image to get rich, or in his words, yeah, I'm just trying to get paid right quick. In the first episode of the show, he even details he might not even be a fan of his most popular song. It's a good song, man. I kinda hate this song. I love the little exploration in this episode because it focuses on the conflict that can exist within celebrity. Alfred has a partner friend situation something with another famous person who seems to enjoy fame despite both of them having the same end goal. However, the means are different. It seems like Sierra performs her fame because it gets her paid well and competition is stiff. I gotta compete with white girls with lip fillers and butt injections, selling lip gloss and spray tan. Everybody want to be a black girl, but the black girls ain't making no money from it. She also might enjoy the public narrative of Paperboy and Sierra in a relationship. Alfred rejects the false narrative in order to keep it real, this idea of keeping it real as a way to keep oneself. This can be confusing at times because Alfred leans into the Paperboy image for his benefit. When Alfred decides to walk home, it's confusing because he doesn't like the idea of brand linking, even though I thought they were in a partner, friend, situationship something. Before we was anything special. And it also might be commitment issues. Maybe he wants a relationship. Who knows? At times, Alfred uses his image as a drug dealing rapper for his benefit before rejecting it. This deepens the conversation about fame. I think we need more responsible celebrities. The idea of realness isn't a bad one. Celebs critiquing facets of their image could lead to fans making better decisions. For example, in the second episode of Atlanta, season one, after being home for a bit after getting out of jail, Alfred walks outside to clear his head. While walking, he sees kids pretending to be him, one being shot, the other a paper boy. He sees that and tries to take responsibility for his image, but is immediately countered by the need for a photo. Although this message wasn't communicated properly, the means are what is important. On the other hand, and potentially even more important, fans need a more responsible way to treat celebrities. They aren't gods, they are people with trauma. For example, I don't think photos with celebrities are bad. I think assuming celebrities always want photos and not asking is an issue. Some celebrities fear being blasted on the internet because a fan didn't get a picture. It diminishes their image, which isn't completely held up by the celebrity themselves. This assumed access to celebrities dehumanizing and at times painful to watch. I feel like some of the conflict within Alfred about fame comes from the way he is treated, this object to be mishandled by press, fans, and peers, including Ern at times. Another side note, despite what the Zan episode was trying to do, I don't think Zan's and Alfred's exploits are the same. Sure, they exist within the same market, rap fans, but I think using your own trauma and situation is different than commenting on someone else's for a living. Zan could easily rap too, but instead he chose to troll and mock Alfred for just existing. Also, Montague was trying to rev up and get a reaction from Alfred during his stay on the episode. I can't imagine my life being newsworthy, let alone my tweets. This is a strange pattern I see for popular artists that affirm to disdain for fame. I think Alfred just wants to be treated better, be happy, and have stability, but his unique intersection of fame and money isn't allowing for that. Atlanta is my favorite show right now that really isn't a show. Instead of hand-holding and stringing together a plot and a narrative for a character, it becomes a platform or a window and experiences of many people who happen to live in Atlanta. Through their experiences and trials, we get moments and commentary that at times can be liberating or damning. A wake-up call for some. Within Atlanta, we get a portrait of people trying to do the best with their situation and the complexity within that. Woods paints a nuanced picture of celebrity that can't get across in a couple of tweets, unfortunately. Alfred is not okay, and maybe neither are we, but in a way, it's okay. Atlanta doesn't pretend to be okay, and happily enough, that's a good starting point.